Good morning students. Today I am going to teach you material removal and vaporization. So here we will see the process of uh, material removal and vaporization. How it is done. Okay. So uh, here we have four uh, diagrams. So first uh, that shows uh, each and every step. Okay. For the laser removal process. Okay. So initially when the laser light is allowed to fall on a material. Okay, if, if, if consider this is a material, when it is allowed to fall on the material, uh, part of the wave will be reflected and part will be uh, absorbed. So that is the thing. So due to the absorption, uh, the, uh, it will penetrate or it will go inside the material. Okay, and some thermal conduction will happen. So when because of the laser property, it will penetrate into the material and the heat will be conducted evenly. Okay, inside the material. Okay, and the next step is if, if, if I continue giving laser light like this. Okay, if I continue showing the laser light towards the same material, what will happen? The thermal conduction, the temperature keeps on increasing and it will form uh, a liquid state. Okay, that means the material is melting. So the portion of the material that are near to the laser beam, it is it is start melting. Okay, so because of that, we'll have a small slight liquidification in this area. Okay, and the next process is vaporization. That means if I again keep on giving uh, the, uh, I mean, showing the laser towards the material, what will happen? The the liquid will be the liquid state here. We will have n number of uh, vapors inside it. So the vapors will try to uh, escape from this material. So this is the diagram showing that the vapor is escaping or the droplet is escaping from the um, liquid material okay so at once the vaporization happens it will be very very uh, molten state it will be very loose okay so at this stage hole is formed okay so our purpose is uh, removal of laser so i'm uh, sorry removal of material so the material is removed now okay a hole is formed okay Again, if I keep on giving some uh, 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 the same laser towards the same material, what will happen? Plasma will be produced. Plasma is nothing but a group of ions or free electrons that is having no charge, electric charge. It doesn't have electric charge, but it is having uh, a free electrons. It is completely of free electrons. So, this free electrons will be trying to come back that means it is come trying to come back from the material as a LSA laser laser supported absorption wave and it is coming uh, back uh, towards the laser source so just listen the laser light is going like this and due to the plasma production LSA is formed that is trying to come back to the same but the opposite part. Okay, towards the laser source it is coming. Okay, so this is the laser supported absorption wave. Okay, there are wide range of lasers are used for this purpose like my, my material removal and vaporization some of them are co2 lasers carbon dioxide lasers uh, india laser and eczema so these are some of the examples uh, now uh, if you want to increase the amount of uh, removal okay so uh, the amount of removal can be increased by two things one is flushing out the uh, unwanted or molten materials. So just imagine during the laser uh, uh, process, laser removal process, welding, uh, sorry, material removal process, the laser is uh, focused on the material and the, some of the portion will be, uh, will become molten state. So at once it become molten, so the unwanted portion can be flushed off. Okay, so if this is done, what will happen again? The laser is allowed to target over the new area because of that the laser removal process, the amount of removal will be increased. Okay, and the second uh, uh, method or mechanism is uh, particulate emission. So that means by increasing the emission. 
ignition of the laser. That means, as I have already said, once the uh, laser hits the material, the first thing that happens is uh, the uh, emission, that is the ion emission. Okay, so these emissions should be improved. So if this is improved, definitely the amount of vaporization will be improved. Okay, so now let's see the uh, a graph. Uh, uh, showing the plot of uh, pulse duration versus power densities. So this is the various regions uh, where uh, the laser uh, removal or laser processing, sorry, the material processing can be done. So if I say for example, uh, so during this, uh, if uh, the region, so this is the line showing the melting uh, uh, threshold. So if the, uh, if the threshold or the, if the melting uh, temperature it is below or if the power density is below this melting line, what will happen? There is no melting takes place. Just the laser, uh, it is targeting the material. Just uh, it is absorbing. That's it. So uh, in order to have a material melting, it should be it the power should be just above the cutoff line. Okay, and this is the region where welding is uh, happening. And uh, just if it just listen, if the after this, so just right after this welding process, the pulse duration is very high. So if the, in this case, what what will happen? Because of the high pulse duration, uh, uh, the the localized heating it is not possible because of the localized heating is absent. Uh, the, um, uh, the, the the material removal efficiency will be reduced because a uh, wide range of uh, area will be heated, so the efficiency, the heat conduction will be uh, very much poor. Okay, and these are the areas where fall drilling. So that means uh, the pulse duration should be in this range and power density should be in this range. Okay, so these are the various areas where the laser can be used uh, in various applications. Okay, thank you.